All right, so what I'm going to talk about isn't super innovative, um, but it's important. Um, EQM is an organization that's been around for over 20 years, and like most social justice nonprofits, we've had that ebb and flow of um, you know having really great times of feast and really great times of famine. And when I came into the organization, we were in very dire straits. So this is a this is a little bit of a comparison of where we were in February 2013 when I started, and where we're at now as of August 2014. Some things to note is that when I started, I was the only employee. It was just me. There had been no ED in place since October of 2012. Four months prior to my arrival, we had $300 in the bank, and we had four well-meaning board members who really didn't know where to start. But, as you can tell, we've made some strides. We have three and a half FTE, we're fi financially sustainable through the next fiscal year. We have an autonomous office space, we're no longer the stepchildren of the ACLU, although we love the ACLU. <laughs> <laughs> we have 10 active board members, we have three programs with one in development instead of just the one. We doubled our social media reach, we increased our individual contributions in the calendar year of 2013 by 50%, 100K in unanticipated grant revenue. How did all this happen? It was a lot of hard work. The end. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the irony is that, I mean, and, and we had some serious reputation problems, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we were seen as a rich, gay, white man's organization. Which is ironic because we really didn't have any money. Um, but still, I mean, that's how we were perceived. We only cared about marriage and we were dysfunctional as an organization. So, it was a huge load to start lifting, understandably. So where did we start? We set and communicate goals, communicated goals that directly address our deficiencies. So, one critique, we were too much about Albuquerque and Santa Fe, the main urban centers in New Mexico. So we set a goal to be a trusted and present advocate in communities statewide, cognizant and honoring regional differences. And it didn't necessarily mean that we were going to place staff everywhere, but we were at least going to be mindful of the fact that we didn't have that kind of reach, so we needed to make sure to pay attention to other parts of the state. EQNM not being a good partner. So we set a goal to be a trusted partner that actually shows up for other organizations. Behavior being one of the key things in terms of getting there. Listening, we've all talked about listening so that we can learn. That was the first thing we had to do and we had to be humble and we had to take our licks and we had to listen to all of the horrible things that Ekunin had done to everyone in New Mexico. <laughs> we had to own our shit. I mean, we had to own it. We had to say, yeah, we did these things. Yeah, we didn't show up for our trans community. Yeah, we haven't been cognizant of communities of color. Yeah, we haven't done a really great job of that. We had to be honest about why. <laughs> we had to be honest about the struggles that we had as an organization. We had to be transparent about the things that we were going to change. And we had to communicate those things and invite the community to get on board with us. We had to actually be different. So we couldn't just say, hey, we're going to start doing all of this. We actually had to demonstrate that we were going to do it. So if we didn't want to be a rich gay white man's organization anymore, we had to make sure that we weren't just serving that community, that we weren't just showing up in that community, and that our board and our staff didn't just reflect that community. Integrity, always. Always, always, always. We are not going to leave behind our trans community anymore. I heard Brandy say that yesterday because it's wrong to do so. And so we are actually being different, not just saying that we're being different, and we're living in our integrity. We say yes. We say yes to as much as possible. Because we need to continually be uplifting our community, and there's no reason why, if we're able, that we shouldn't. And we just show, we show up. But co making commitments, local community, that was key. We had to make a commitment to our local community in New Mexico, to people in relationships, letting go of ownership behavior. That's huge. There's so many organizations that try to own issues and say, we did this, this is our issue, this is our victory. But what we know is that the people have to own the movement. La gente have to own the movement. And so we let go of ownership. And then committing to working yourself out of a job, not keeping your doors open. Technical stuff, of course. We had to work on the technical stuff. Quality, not quantity. I had four board members who were well-meaning. A lot of people might think, i got to fill those board vacancies. But we focused on getting the right board members. Board members who were about more than just marriage and committed to the long-term vision of EQM. Infrastructure. We had to get infrastructure in place. New computers. My two computers that I inherited were from 1995. <laughs> we had to get infrastructure in place. We had to raise the funds to do so. Accountability. We hadn't had a financial review in over six years. We forced ourselves to have two back-to-back -back financial reviews. 
We rebranded. See how pretty? <laughs> we bet, right? <laughs> and we communicated all of this. We were in constant communication with our folks, telling them, look at how we're changing, look at how we're growing. And we committed to knowing our strengths versus trying to know everything. We don't need to own all of the issues. We just want to do what we do best, as best as possible. Internal management processes, that matter, those matter. Timeliness, real collaboration, and my favorite, subverting the nonprofit industrial complex. <laughs> yes, really. And we've done that by making sure that we're bringing in other partners who can't bring in grant dollars into our projects and giving them real money, not just $1,000 here and $1,000 there, but $20,000 to be, in a, be a meaningful partner at the table, and also making strategic hires that actually free up time of people to be able to devote to other smaller organizations. And the payoff. You can read some of these here. We were awarded the International Jose Julio Saria Civil Rights Award. We were awarded the Albuquerque Pride Outstanding Nonprofit Award. We raised almost $12,000 in 24 hours in one crowdfunding opportunity. And you can see all of these different comments that we've received just in social media, in emails. And somebody's actually named us in their will. So, thank you.